Yo, what's up? Welcome to another build guide. So this is a skill that most people probably forget about uh, after all the changes to the talent tree, masteries, new influences. Um, maybe for another reasons, I don't know. Because I haven't seen much people playing this for the last couple of leagues. Even maybe, let's say, for the last year, let's say. Alright, uh, so just, I want to just try this with the, all of the masteries, influence types and also test this build on uber content and hard mode imitations, those kind of stuff. So this was the perfect leak to uh, test this and surprisingly this build still does all content. I'm not sure why people don't even know this build these days. Uh, this was one of the best uh, champion builds in the game by the way a couple of years ago. This was the shit, you know, this was the meta. So hopefully maybe more, more people will play this after this video because this build is still very powerful. Uh, so first of all, can you play this as a leak starter? Yes, but a little bit different version. I will also put a path of building obviously for leak start. I actually played this build as a leak starter two leagues ago, I believe. Uh, once they first added the masteries, you know. Because I just saw the sword masteries. Impale chance, crit strike chance, friends charge on hit, you know, those kind of uh, ridiculous stuff. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna start as detail champion. I actually did that uh, once they first added the masteries, whatever the leak was that I don't remember. Uh, you can do that. But this build struggles at red tier maps uh, without much upgrades. So if you are looking for a slower leak start, maybe you can just easily do that. Uh, but these days, uh, some of the core items that you need on this build are actually super cheap. So maybe you can just uh, spend some extra time on yellow tier maps. Uh, maybe farm some heists, you know. Uh, if you if you are just patient, uh, you can easily play this build as a league starter. The leveling process is, by the way, really easy. The character is also super tanky after the first one or two labyrinths. Uh, that's pretty much it. I will just also, again, put some leveling section in the path of building. So feel free to try it. Again, I did it a couple of leagues ago and it works. Uh, but you will again need that uh, some core items so the build can actually uh, ramp up on the damage part, you know. So let's just explain how this build works. So first of all, uh, let's take a look at the skill itself. Lancing Steel. So this is a Steel skill, yeah, because there are three different Steel skills. There is also a Splitting Steel skill, which you will need uh, while uh, leveling your character, actually, if you also want to do this character as a uh, leak starter. There is also Shattering skill. Shattering Steel, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this is actually better for DPS uh, compared to Splitting Steel, but it actually consumes more shards as far as I can remember. Uh, but this actually deals uh, decent damage, so while leveling uh, you can also level with this instead of Splitting Steel after some point. Uh, because Splitting Steel's damage won't be enough, uh, especially if you are playing this as a leak starter, so you will maybe have no gear, obviously no tabula rasa, no, no weapons, jewelry, whatever. So Shattering Steel is probably gonna be a better option. So what about Lancing Steel? This is the main skill obviously for this build. Lancing Steel actually sucks so hard while leveling. It doesn't even kill any rare monsters. So that is how stupid it is. Uh, without any investment, any projectile count, uh, you know, not kept impaled chance, whatever. Lancing Steel is just shit. Do not even try it while leveling your character through the acts. It can't even kill a rare monster again. It is so bad. Uh, but maybe if you have any leveling gear, maybe that is your second or third character, maybe it can be better, I don't know. So yeah, these are the steel skills. But this build is based on lancing steel, obviously. But you can still map with splitting steel, because it has actually better clear. Uh, but the lancing steel has... not lancing, uh, splitting steel uh, has actually very uh, lower DPS. So set shattering... so long story short, let's just explain all the skills again. Splitting steel good for early acts and also good for mapping once you have good gear for the end, end game all right shattering still mostly for leveling through acts and maybe early uh, tier maps you know tier one maps tier two maps whatever uh, without you know any good gear because splitting still again doesn't have much dps shattering still actually has better finally lancing still very bad at act leveling without any gear, any leveling gear, tabular rasa, without anything, alright? But is a beast at endgame content with good gear and this is what we are using at uh, endgame bosses, uber bosses, all content. This is the build that you are watching, alright? So, let's just explain Lancing still furthermore. 
Blank still uh, just shoots some projectiles. You actually shoot and you can just move away. You actually uh, put a projectile, you know, on the ground, whatever. It just shoots stuff. That's it. You don't have to stand still, actually. So you can just press the button, move a little bit, maybe dodge the boss, shoot again, shoot again, move, shoot. You can just do this. This is a range skill. This is not a melee build. So one thing that these three skills have in common, you can actually, yeah, you need to actually press a Call of Steel button. So whenever you put any of these skills in one of your items, you will just also get that Call of Steel button on your skill bar. So these skills actually consume shards, steel shards. You can also see those in game, by the way, your character will have swords uh, behind him. It is actually a free MTX for this build anyways. Uh, so yeah. Uh, you actually need to press that if you run out of charges otherwise this skill deal less damage or maybe you uh, lose their special ability something like that so lancing steel actually uh, fires more projectiles per steel shard consumed and up to four steel shards can be consumed so you will actually lose a lot of dps so once you just get the hang of it you know you just attack a couple of times press uh, call of the steel you don't even need to uh, look at your uh, skill bar, you know, not skill bar, buff bar on the top of your screen. You will just get the hang of it. You just need some experience with the skill. Just shoot a couple of times, press call of steel, shoot a couple of times, press call of steel. That's it. You just need to get used to it. Some people don't like it probably. Maybe this is built is not for you. Uh, but for lancing steel, because you can also move while attacking, you know, just shoot, move, shoot, move. It is actually easy to do that. Again, this build is actually really easy to play. Uh, that's about the skill. So let's just explain uh, more stuff. Maybe the gems, those kind of stuff. So first of all, this skill hits a lot of times uh, because Lance still shoots lots of projectiles, and you also need to use GMP support. And once you have the budget, a vacant GMP. So this skill shoots lots of projectiles. Uh, that's the reason we are actually gonna abuse uh, life on hit, obviously. So you need a Watcher's Eye with life on it. Uh, maybe if you can afford that. Or any life on hit gear. It can be rings. Elder base rings can actually have that. You can also use maybe uh, small clusters. Just maybe one or two of them. So you can actually have some decent life on hit. Uh, so after that you can obviously. Because you shoot lots of projectiles at the same time. You will actually leech a lot of uh, life back. This character also has leech. So life on it at top of it. Uh, very nice sustain actually. Uh, after that. So, so for that obviously you need to use vitality gem. It can be a lower level if you are a lower level character. But once your character is higher level, you can actually level this with your character at the same time. So my gem was 15 levels. But you can just start with a couple of levels if your character is a lower level. Because this actually um, reserves a certain amount of mana, not percentage. That's why having a lower level character can actually be bad for your uh, vitality. You cannot just use a high level, alright? If you are not familiar with how this aura works same thing goes for precision and clarity but i'm not using those uh, in this build so other buffs pride obviously this is a physical impale build more physical damage and it also stacks if you just stay in the boss's radius which you will do obviously determination armor war banner uh, you can start with dread banner because it also provides um, what's that impale chance but after some point, once you get the talent tree, you know, uh, get the masteries, those kind of stuff, you can actually cap your impale chance. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That's why after some point, red banner is pointless. So war banner is actually better. This also provides a cruiser rating at the top of uh, nearby enemies take physical damage. So that is how you can actually cap your accuracy easier. Uh, that's about the banner choice. Uh, we also use a divine blessing setup. You don't need this, but th there are two reasons that I'm using this. So first of all, divine blessing is a gem. A support gem that lets you use an aura and it just gets activated for a certain amount of time. If you also use increased duration support, it goes up to, you know, 18 seconds, 17 seconds, something like that. So if you have a good DPS, this is uh, enough time to finish a Maven invitation, actually. But because this reserves, uh, not reserves, consumes mana, which you won't have, obviously, because we reserve lots of stuff, you also want to use life tap support. So it actually consumes life instead of mana. So the aura choice that I have is Grace. For more evasion, Champion can already scale this because he ha has uh, some percentage evasion on his own kit and also some on the talent tree. So that's why in the end this provides huge evasion so you can actually be tankier. You can skip this and use Haste Aura instead or any other aura that you can think of but these are probably the best choices. 
uh, that additional attack speed doesn't do much for this build so that's why i want to be tankier instead so here is another reason to reason to use this champion has a notable first to strike last to fall your hits permanently intimidate enemies that are on full life so meaning more dps obviously gain adrenaline for 20 seconds when you reach low life so adrenaline is above that actually uh, gives you 100 percent damage 25% attack cast and movement speed and 10% additional physical damage reduction. So very nice DPS and also defense against physical damage. So if you didn't get hit by anything, this build is already tanky so it is hard to get to, to that low life uh, un unless you do some face tanking, you know, those kind of stuff. So that's why you actually want to pop it before a boss fight for that additional DPS. Because this provides millions of DPS once you have good gear. So if you use uh, Grace or maybe Haste, maybe other aura choice that you have, but th for this build, uh, I tried uh, Grace, obviously. With Divine Blessing and Life Tap, you actually um, consume your life. So if you press this two times in a row, maybe three times, if you do something wrong, I don't know, you actually go to low life, obviously, because this consumes life. You will just lose your life once you press that Grace. So this way, you can actually go to low life before entering the boss arena or maybe before clicking the button in maven invitation something like that so once you go low life you pop adrenaline then start to combat in 20 seconds just delete everything uh, that's pretty much it about this and that is all the uh, auras those kind of stuff that i'm using so now i will explain the, the gear obviously maybe i will also mention some couple couple of other stuff on some equipments so maybe you can consider using those if you have a lower budget maybe you are at uh leak start i don't know uh, let me show you the other notables champion has because i forgot those permanent fortify so this character is has always fortify and meaning that you are going to be tankier against hits all the time unstoppable hero so this actually gives you cannot be stunned while fortified and also huge attack speed and armor evasion finally master of metal impale you inflict last one additional hit so this means that you can actually stack uh, more dps if you don't know how Impale works, just uh, go to Path of Exile uh, Gamepedia. You can just read it uh, in that website. So this actually provides a huge DPS. Impale additional hit is very nice DPS for Impale builds. That is why on your Watcher's Eye, you also need Impale last two additional hits while affected by Pride. Uh, so combining with Master of Metal, you can actually in your Impales actually last three additional hits. Uh, that's good DPS. So let's explain the items right now. So weapon choice. If you are at uh, leak start, maybe you tried this as a leak start. So here is how I played this um, at leak start. This build is normally dual wield, but you can maybe start as two handed. Um, that can actually be better at leak start because two handed weapons have high um, damage because they are two handed. So if you want to do that, uh, you can just obviously after the leveling process has finished uh, by leveling, you need to use whatever you can find on the ground. But after like level 60, 65, you are at Act 9 or maybe Act 10, just killing Kitawa. Uh, Terminus as Sword. So this is very nice. Uh, you can probably play as a two-hander. Or if you want to play dual wield, Sikeva Sword. This is actually how I played dual wielding Sikevas. These are like one alchemy at leak start, even at day one, day two. Because no one uses this. No one plays melee as a leak starter or attack builds. People don't like it for some reason. Uh, so dual wielding scaver actually works and these swords can actually carry you until red tier maps easily but after some point you obviously need to spend extra um farm your currency because weapons are number one upgrades for attack builds so here are the weapon options that you need after some point so first of all this sword i believe its name is dread big but i'm trying to find it in path of building right now uh yeah this sword dread big rusted sword so this is probably your best option as leak starter and also low budget because this is also going to be cheap enough so 100 percent damage on low life and also you have onslaught on low life so this build normally is not low life uh, i haven't played as low life because you don't need to but if you want to do this as a leak starter with lower budget budget uh, this is the weapon you have to buy so you have to also play as low life so you need to activate petrified blood buff instead of something else uh, but you also need to use arrogant support on some of your buffs so you can actually reserve life also so this way you can actually be on low life all the time and also have that buffs that red beak actually provides a lot of damage and permanent onslaught 
This sword is actually almost good as a paradoxica by the way. So you can just easily play with this until you can afford a paradoxica. So after that uh, my weapons, the ones that you watched in the clips obviously. Paradoxica, probably the, uh, the best weapon a 100 melee build can use. Attacks with this weapon deal double damage, so you will always deal double damage. Because this is a physical build, you need a high physical damage DPS Paradoxica. So if you have a lower budget, maybe you are just upgrading your character from Dreadbeak, you just search for high physical roll with Impale. That's it. Uh, after some point, obviously, if you want a better one, you also need to type in that attack speed. So once you type in that attack speed, it goes up to 10 exalt, maybe even 15 exalt, depending on how many people actually buy this stuff. Uh, buy this sword, obviously. So that means that uh, obviously this is a very uh, expensive item in the end, but this is the min max of this build. So if you just skip that attack speed, only uh, type in that physical damage with impale, that sword is 90 chaos. With the attack speed, it is 15 exalt. <laughs> so that is how ridiculous it, it is. Uh, so feel free to start with a cheaper one. After some point, also get that attack speed one. That's it. That's your upgrade. So second item. So this is something that you can get at leak start, maybe day 3, maybe day 4, I don't know, but under a week. Paradoxica is harder to find, that's why you need a dread beak instead of that. A Savior Sword. So this is a drop from Cirrus, but there is also cards for this, so it is actually not that hard to find this. And because these kind of builds are not meta, this sword is ridiculously cheap right now. Even at leak start, this was like 100 chaos, maybe one exalt. So you need to actually buy this as soon as possible. This is the biggest upgrade for this build. Triggers level 20 reflection when equipped. Uh, that means that, that is, you actually have a special skill, but you don't have to press it. It is actually automatic. Uh, so what you need to do is once you crit with any attack, you actually summon uh, two clones reflections. Each clone reflection actually deals your half DPS. So because you summon two reflections, that means that you actually have one more of your character total. So in the end you actually deal uh, double damage maybe. Because those clones actually deal the same DPS as you do. And they will just hit whatever skill you crit with. So if you just leap slam around the map you can actually summon some reflections that leap slams. <laughs> so it technically does nothing. But once you crit with Lancing Steel. They will actually get refreshed and this time they actually shoot Lancing Steel. Uh, so that's why these guys actually deal a lot of DPS. Technically doubles your DPS, so this is the best weapon that this uh, build uses. Again, buy this as soon as possible if you play this build as a leak starter. Uh, because of these uh, reflections actually, because this build also uses Sniper Mark as a curse choice, because that is the best curse for projectile builds, this means that we shoot lots of projectiles at the same time, and Sniper Mark actually splits the projectiles. That is actually very nice for Maven Invitations, because you kill all the bosses at the same time. So let's say you just focus on one boss, once you're done with that boss, you will actually notice that the other bosses also have half HP maybe. That is how powerful Sniper Mark is. Uh, but because of all these reasons, Lasso Projectiles and also Clones actually also attack with projectiles, sometimes the game lags a lot. The servers cannot handle all of those projectiles. So, I don't have nice ping because servers are so far away from my country. Uh, my minimum ping is like 60. Maybe if you have like 10 ping, maybe you will have less lag, I don't know. Uh, but on some single target bosses also like Cirrus, if you just stand still and shoot, you know, go full ham, <laughs> you will actually notice that you will lose some FPS. It can actually get you killed. That is what happened in a couple of my videos, maybe if you notice that. And that's it about this weapon. So moving on to the other items. Let's just finish all the unique items first, because all of the other items are actually rare. So that's actually what makes this build easier to build actually. Belt, Rice Latte Coil, this is your best choice. But before this, there is actually another unique belt. I will just put it on the screen because I always uh, mix their names because there are two different belts. But this was your, this is the one that you are seeing on the left uh, is your low budget option. But most, some people also try this belt in the end game. No idea why, because that is not that good compared to a Rice Latte Coil. So you, you obviously need a Rice Latte Coil uh, for uh, more DPS because it provides more maximum physicals and minimum less uh, less minimum physicals. So that means that that part actually loses some DPS uh, for your character. So you actually need a better rolled 
more maximum and the verse rolled less minimum. So 40% more is the best. 30% less is the best that you can get. All right. After that, you use attack catalyst. So you can actually boost those numbers and that's your belt. All right. Uh, let's start from head to the toe. Let's say maybe to, to the jewelry last. Uh, helmet. So first of all, enchant choice. Lancing steel fires an additional projectile. This is the best thing you can get probably because more projectiles means more DPS and also more life on hit at the same time. For the stats, because this build uses lots of rare pieces, you don't need much unique actually. You can maybe use anything that you like for your uh, impaled build. Maybe something works for this build. But I played as full rares, so I can actually have a 100% spell suppression to make the character tankier. Uh, that is what you need obviously for um, all content and game, you know. You want your character to be tankier if you can do that. So that's why on any piece that you can put actually, you know, helmet, Maybe body armor, uh, boots, and gloves. You need to put spell suppression. The uh, rest of the spell suppression comes from the talent tree. So you actually don't need 100% on your gear. So after that, obviously, life resistances. There is not much else to put on your helmet. You can pick maybe elder base helmets, but this is gonna be harder to craft. So I'm not responsible for anything. I'm not. I'm just, I'm just mentioning it. Maybe you, you want to try it. Uh, because elder bases actually have nearby enemies take physical damage so that's a more multiplier and provides good dps but i actually found that uh, these new influences searing exarchs and either of worlds are actually cheaper and easier to craft because you can just buy a regular item from someone else for like 50k as one exalt whatever with suppression life all of that and just uh, craft it implicit later on so the implicit that i picked attack damage and reduce mana cost of attacks so Lancing Steel is a skill that actually consumes a lot of mana. And I mean a lot of mana. It is just stupid. They really need to nerf it, you know. It is not uh, logical. So at least that you actually need to use life tap support if you want to play this skill. Because the mana cost is not manageable at all. So that's why using reduced mana cost on your helmet. And also using jewelry. Maybe with minus mana cost. Or maybe replica conquer efficiency jewel. Or also body armor, the next piece. With uh, socket attacks have minus cost. So this actually lets you play without uh, any mana problems at the end. But at least that you won't have access to most of these. So that, needs, that means that you actually need to use life tap support instead. Uh, that is how you should probably play. If you are looking for a lower budget budget uh, version. So body armor. This is the high end version obviously. I will just also put another examples on the screen. But in the end you obviously need that mana cost reduction. If you haven't fixed that somewhere else. Additional curse for more DPS. Attack crit, obviously, this is an attack build. And also, if you want to be ailment immune, avoid ailments. So that is a prefix that people use uh, tier 4. Ailing, uh, ailing, whatever, however it is pronounced. Um, unveil. So that is how people craft it. If you are a good crafter, you already know how to do that. If you are not, just buy it from someone else. Because people sell these kind of items all the time. Uh, so you just need that Katarina's tier 4 Aislink uh, Veil. That is how you can also put that. So avoid ailments on the prefix. Also avoid ailments on my boots. I also have some on the talent tree. And that is how you can actually be completely immune to ailments. So again other options are on the screen. If you want to use another body armor depending on your budget. But get at least attacks have crit and curse maybe. You can fix the mana cost from somewhere else. Uh, jewelry. Again, Replica Conquer Efficiency Jewel. Helmet Implicit. Uh, also, you can play with Life Tap Support. Again, same stuff. So boots. Uh, now that I mentioned Avoid Ailments. So how to craft this? Uh, how I crafted this, let's say. But, but you can also use something else, maybe. Uh, I just bought something with Spell Suppression. Fracture. These are like one exalt right now. Uh, lower tiers are 50 chaos, 100 chaos. After that, I used Essence of Loathing. The highest tier because I believe that is what I needed or maybe I just overpaid it. I'm not sure. Uh, avoid ailment chance. It goes up to 35% if the essence is good actually. So I just aimed for life resist, movement speed, whatever I can craft to finish the craft, you know. That's it. Nothing else special. And for the implicit you can put another avoid ailments with this Eater of World and um, Searing Exarch implicit currencies. For the other one, I picked action speed for more DPS. But if you maybe haven't kept your resistances, there is also resistance. There is maximum resist, those kind of stuff. But in the end, if you can find and afford a good body armor, 
You want to be completely ailment immune. So that is why you need to also put that avoid ailments. Uh, if you need maybe a higher percentage of ailment immunity because your body armor can actually provide lower uh, values. Because once you unveil the body armor, it goes up to 35%. But if you put it from the bench, I believe it is like 25%. So if you are missing that 10%, maybe just do the math, you know, uh, just combine everything on your items, on your talent tree. If you still need more avoid ailments, use a higher tier of uh, Ecor's embers, whatever they are, the Eater of Birds and Searing Exar, and craft a better avoid ailments on the implicit of your boots. It actually goes up to 30%, I believe. So that is how to do that ailment immunity. Uh, moving on. Glows. Again suppress. If you still need accuracy. So this is an attack build. So you may need to put some accuracy on at least one of your items. That is what I did. I don't have any accuracy on my rings. Uh, you can easily put accuracy on your rings by the way. That is going to be probably cheaper. Anyways. But don't forget that accuracy alright. Life resist suppress. If you have an open prefix, damage via leech or damage to ring flask effect. That actually provides good DPS, but that is the min max for this build. For the implicit, again same thing. Effect of marks is very nice actually because this is a sniper mark curse build. That provides more DPS, obviously effect provides even more. For the other implicit, I got rage on it, but it is actually a little hard to get that. Uh, you can easily skip it. It doesn't do much in the end actually. I just found it and I was like, okay, rage is nice. I will just play with this. So while mapping, you can obviously generate rage. Uh, so that is actually nice. But on boss fights, because you generate rage every maybe one second, if you use the higher tier, it is like 0.8 second, 9 second. I don't know. It is still almost one second. So you will just kill everything until before you hit that 50 rage. But here is something that you can do. I will just put two items on the screen because I always forgot their names. I am not sure right now what their names are. So you are seeing a ring and a belt on the screen. If you actually equip these before uh, starting a Maven invitation, maybe. So a boss fight that you can actually burst. Maybe Cirrus last phase. Something like that. I actually used that on Uber Cirrus. Maybe you uh, noticed that, that I am doing that between the phases. So if you actually equip these items, the ring actually has temporal chains in it. So actually you reflect the temporal chains to yourself. Uh, once you equip this, you actually need to press the temporal chains. Uh, so I actually uh, what is that? adjusted my skill bar. So whenever I pr uh, equip that, that temporal chains is actually at my skill bar, you know. So you need to do that if you want to be faster in the game. So you actually need to uh, activate the temporal chains. Maybe you need to deactivate something else because that is a reservation skill. So this way you actually apply a blasphemy temporal chains to yourself. Once you take out the ring, you actually generate rage because of the belt. Because it says when you lose temporal chains, you gain max rage, something like that. So the thing you need to do, equip the ring and the belt. Press temporal chains on your skill bar. Maybe you need to deactivate something first, alright. Then equip your usual ring. You know, just equip that. That will just instantly deactivate temporal chains. Anyways, you don't need to press temporal chains or whatever. Just equip your normal ring. And then the belt. So that's it. Uh, just try it in your hideout maybe. Uh, until you learn how to do that. I also have clip probably on the screen right now. Alright. If you do that you actually get that 5th rage. Before even attacking anything. And because your gloves actually have that 5th rage. If you don't press maybe berserk. By the way I don't have berserk normally. That is not even in my um, path of building. The DPS that 100 million something is actually without berserk. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, but I actually use Enduring Cry. Uh, if you can just jam swap with Enduring Cry, that is how I did actually on a couple of fights. You can actually pop that, uh, use that Rage and pop Berserk for some ridiculous DPS, some ridiculous burst potential. That is good for invitation. So you can just do this uh, before starting the invitation. Uh, belt swap, Ring swap. Bam, bam, get that Rage, press the button, you know, fight begins, pop everything, pop Rage. Everything is dead. Uh, you can do that. Or again, you can do this. Don't press Berserk. So you can actually play with 5th Rage all the time. Because Rage provides attack speed, attack damage, movement speed. Those kind of stuff. That's it. Uh, that is about the Rage. Feel free to use it or not. Uh, once you have over gear, you don't need it. But if you are looking for some additional fun, Rage is actually nice. And final items, jewelry. First of all, amulet. So because good amulets are hard to find and expensive, these days amulet crafts are um, super easy. So first of all, the stats that you need. 
This build needs some um, intelligence, obviously. So that's why you need actually good intelligence on your items. Uh, most of, mostly uh, jewelry, so amulet and rings. Because I didn't want to put much intelligence, so I can actually focus on more DPS on my rings. I actually put everything on my amulet. So here is how to craft this, uh, or cheaper, let's say. I highly suggest you to craft your own amulet. By the way, it is way more cheaper. Because maybe right now something like this doesn't even ex exist. I don't know. Because these have good tiers on it. And the other stats, again, let's just mention that. So attributes, intelligence, whatever you are missing to cap that intelligence or maybe other missing stats, let's say. Physical damage to attacks. Life. Crit multiplier. Maybe resist. And also maybe open prefix to put um, damage while leeching. That is super nice. Or uh, minus mana cost if you still need mana uh, cost reduction for some reason. But once you have that good body armor and also craft that implicit on your helmet, you actually don't need mana cost reduction anymore. Um, none of my jewelry actually has mana cost reduction right now. Yeah. So here is how to craft your amulet. You need to buy fractured amulets, fractured intelligence, fractured uh, all attributes, fractured physical damage to attacks, fractured crit multiplier. So anything that we are using right now, maybe fractured life. Whatever is the cheapest on some good base that also provides intelligence maybe because that is what this build mainly needs. So just get two different fractured. So one of the items can be a fractured attribute. One of the item can be fractured global strike multiplier. So that is what I picked. That is, this is this example. But again, you can pick other fractured that I just mentioned. After that, use recombinator, jewelry recombinator. So you have a chance to combine the both fractured on a single item. If you fail, just buy whatever you are missing and try again. This actually took me 3 tries. And the fractured items were like 30 chaos. Uh, I believe attributes is cheaper, crit multiplier is like 30-40 chaos. So each attempt costed me like 70 chaos. I spent under an exalt to craft this base actually. Then later on I bought some essences and it took me like 10 essences to hit something. It depends on RNG obviously, but you can craft this for cheaper, maybe more expensive. But norm most of the times if you just search for a good amulet, it is at least 5 exalt. Maybe even more. If you if you also search for open prefix, that is probably 10 exalt. Um, but because attack builds are not popular, maybe they are cheap right now, I don't know. Uh, it can be cheaper. So just search for the market. If you think that they are uh, super expensive, just craft your own amulets. It is always cheaper. And that is how to do that. Next. Rings. Again, good stats. If you still need accuracy, put that. If you still need intelligence, put that. Otherwise, resist, life, physical damage to attacks, crit multiplier. Crit multiplier is something that you can get with essences, or it can also exist on elder and warlord bases. If you don't have a life on it, Watcher's Eye, uh, this is also a good place to put life on hit, because elder bases can have elder, uh, what's that, attack on hit, uh, life on it, at beat attacks, whatever. So yeah, these are about the rings. Uh, finally, once you have a good body armor uh, that has also apply additional curse, you also need to put vulnerability curse on one of your rings because this way you can actually apply two curses. Our main curse is obviously sniper mark. Our second curse is vulnerability. That's it about the rings and that's it about everything about this build. I will just also show petal building real quick because there is not much to explain on the Terran tree for this build. I only use six jewels. So right now we are in Path of Building. Intuitive Leap. This is super cheap. Even at League Start it doesn't cost much. This is a very nice place. I always put this on builds. If I go to this side. Because this build is sword build. And also needs suppression. I go all the way here. From Duelist. So once you put Intuitive Leap. You can actually get Notables. Without even connecting to them. So these are all the Notables that I picked. You can just see that I got Heartseeker. Survivalist. Aspect of the Links. Good damage. Move speed. Life. Accuracy. So just check this in Petal Building. I just, I'm just gonna move on. So Masteries are very nice for this build. Here is how to get Impale chances. Impale with Sword Mastery. There is an Impale Knot here. Also Scavering. Um, I believe there is also Impale on Physical Mastery. So lots of Impale on the Talent Tree. The skill already itself has some Impale. And Champion also provides some Impale. So that is how to achieve good Impale chance. Uh, more Suppression here. This is where the rest of the avoid ailment is. So after your body armor and boots, 
Also, don't forget to combine this, you know, once you are calculating. This actually provides 20% total. Uh, mark for death for calling strike. So, faster uh, boss DPS, you know, kill the bosses faster. This is how you generate friends charge on bosses or anything that doesn't die fast enough. 10% chance to gain friends charge when you hit a marked enemy. Because we shoot lots of projectiles, we will just get those friends charges instantly. Uh, we also use Blood Rage while mapping and also press that on bosses for more attack speed. That also gets you friends charges if you kill anything. Um, that's why we also invested into frenzy charges obviously. This is where we got reservation. And that's it. Let's just also check the... Yeah, that is for crit. Let's just check the large clusters. Because I didn't want to spend extra for any notable passives on the talent tree. I just wanted to fix all the leech uh, from a cluster jewel. So this is a popular cluster jewel. They are like one or two exalt. They are always the same price. Every leak. They cannot be 10 exalt or anything. It is impossible because this is being crafted uh, all the time. Beat the free, fuel the fight. Marshal, Provost. This is the best combination that you can get on most melee uh, attack builds, let's say. Beat the Fury for Leech. And also, if you are leeching DPS, because this build consumes lots of mana, even after all these costs, I still... The skill still costs 14 mana. Uh, if you also get hit by something, you also leech life, obviously. So th this is actually meaning that you leech something all the time, because this says while leeching. This doesn't mean life leech. This also applies for mana leech. So this way you can actually get those buffs almost all the times. Because you will lose that mana all the time. So that way you can actually get some good DPS while leeching. Also uh, covers up that attack leech need uh, for this build. Uh, fuel the fight, mana leech. Same thing again, damage while leeching, so even more DPS. Martial Provost, attack damage, attack speed, accuracy. Probably the best suffix on any cluster for attack builds. For mediums, once you have a good high level character, you can skip a medium cluster if you are have a lower character, by the way, because this saves you 4 points. This is the best combination for projectile builds. Eye to eye, lots of projectile damage. Uh, especially if you are nearby an enemy, because that is what you need to do, because this build also has point blank. You need to attack as close as possible to the boss. At the maximum range you need to be is actually 10 yards, whatever it means in meters, I don't know. I'm using metric system, so I'm not sure how many yards is what meters, but we obviously can't know in game, whatever. Uh, so yeah, you need to be close to the boss as soon as, uh, as much as possible because this provides huge DPS. And also this also works. The other one is repeater, projectile damage and attack speed. Already mentioned the Watcher's Eye, life on it, uh, if you have the budget, but for DPS obviously you need impale last additional hits. Once you have the budget, combine the both, obviously, get a double mod. But this was a triple Watcher's Eye. This also had determination, physical damage reduction for more uh, physical reduction, obviously. But the main stuff you need, pride additional. After that, vitality. Uh, combine the both, obviously. I also mentioned how to get more additional uh, live on hit attacks, uh, cluster jewels, rings. So you can also do those until you can afford something like this. Because this way, let's ch check our leech. 2.7k life on it. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous healing. Uh, without this, let's just also show that. I'm not gonna even say anything. This is just stupid. Uh, some rare jewels. Crit multiplier with one ended. Crit multiplier while dual wielding. Global crit multiplier. Life. Projectile damage. Um... I believe that's it. I cannot think of anything else. Maybe attack speed, obviously, yeah. But you should probably get some good crit multiplier. Don't get melee crit multiplier. This build is not melee. Most people think that this is a melee build for some reason. This is a projectile build. As you can see, we have projectile nodes. We got point blank. We are using GMP support. Alright, this is a projectile build. That's almost it. We also use Lord of Steel. This is something that you can also get while leveling at uh, leak start. This is usually like a couple of alchemy at day one. You need something that grants you Call of Steel has used speed, 90% something. Uh, that is what we need, so you can actually press that Call of Steel faster. You know, the animation is actually way faster. Um, this is super cheap after some point, so make sure you get a Corrupt Blood immunity. There is also Call of Steel has... Plus 4 maximum steel shards. This is very nice for lancing steel because this way you can actually have 
16 shards, meaning that you can attack four times before running out. And that's about it. That's it. Thanks for watching. Again, there are gonna be more stuff in the pet of building, uh, leveling three, some other equipments, maybe lower budget, maybe. So I will try to put as much as possible in the same pet of building. So depending on your budget, depending on the time you are playing um, at the league, you know, maybe league start, maybe you have the good budget, whatever. There are gonna be some couple of examples in the pet of building. Uh, let me know if you are looking for different build guides. I will always try to do those, obviously. But these kind of maybe forgotten builds, maybe they were very powerful at some point of a time, you know, maybe one year ago, two years ago. Because this build is again one of the forgotten ones and still does all content, even the uber bosses. Uh, if you are, if you know any good builds, obviously make sure you are in my Discord and chat with me. You can also become a Patreon member if you want to support the channel. I will see you later. Bye bye.